Hi, it's Ian from the Postal Hub Podcast. And Marek from Last Mile Experts. And we are The Last Mile Profits. This is the last word on The Last Mile. Marek, the classic debate in parcel lockers is open or closed, carrier specific or carrier agnostic. And I know it's a question that we've been asked when we've done various workshops over the last couple of years. And you were telling me earlier that you get asked all the time on LinkedIn, via email, etc., which way to go. Now, Mark, I have a feeling you have an opinion on this one. <laughs> so, uh, I, have what, a feeling, what, I have a feeling. What's, what's, your, right. what's the reasoning behind it okay, as well? So to, to, to share, share your take on this quickly, and then we'll sh- jump into a few examples of what's happening in various parts of the world. The open, closed, or agnostic, or carrier-specific issue is actually all about something that originated a few years ago within the postal organizations who had their networks, which at the time were a double-edged sword, because today most people would say that a bricks and mortar presence in the last mile is a pretty good thing. But I'm sure you remember, Ian, even 10 years ago, post office networks were closing down post offices whenever whenever they could. Wow. Um, it's it's in it part about that, yeah, is that there, there's that what, what's the future of the post office network? But from I can tell you from inside, the thinking was often our competitive advantage as a post, the post's competitive advantage is it is it delivers to every single address. And it's often obliged to do that under law, but if it's got an obligation, it would then try and leverage that obligation to become an advantage. So say to e-commerce retailers, especially going back 10 years ago when in many parts of the world there were less parcel lockers saying, well, we deliver to every doorstep, so sign up an exclusive deal with us. And I know this is sort of tangential to this discussion, Matic, but I've seen a lot of discussion and our friend Dean McCuba over at Last Mile Experts in North America will back this up to say more and more e-commerce retailers are looking at multi-carrier solutions. So... Let's just tuck that sort of in the back of our minds as we're talking about this open versus closed locker networks discussion. Anyway, Maddox, sorry, back to you. Which is, which is absolutely, absolutely true. So, so the, the historical thinking was this is our fortress. We need to protect it because it's our competitive advantage. Now, as locker and PUDO networks together called out of home networks have developed, there have been basically two schools of thought. One which is dominant, which is what I call the, the traditional legacy thinking option, which is which is effectively just a repetition of the old postal network view. We keep it closed because it's our advantage. The idea being, particularly if you're strong, you don't let the others in because people like lockers and pudos, particularly lockers. And a great example there is in Post in Poland, which is a closed network, which has now well over 10,000 machines. No one has anywhere close to that amount. The, the post has about 50 of its own. The next largest network with the post and DHL and DPD has about 250 compared to over 10,000. So, you know, light years ahead. And the thinking from InPost is, okay, we don't let anyone in because we can basically make more money and use it to competitive advantage. The flip side, I have to say that a lot of people still continue to believe that it's right to have a closed network, including Advent who, who own InPost. The flip side, and, and this is very well, much... Don't, don't Amazon uh, think it's best to have a closed network as well? Well, Amazon Amazon's special because Amazon has a sort of a hybrid network because it's closed, but they're beginning to open it up. They, they're not yeah. opening it to carriers, but pretty much to everyone else. In, yeah, so they're opening up their fulfillment network and parts of their delivery network in the UK, as we've discussed in previous videos. And if I can work out how to do it, I'll put a pop-up there or there, I don't know, <laughs> to but a you, video that we've done. Ian, Interestingly, their marketplace at the very beginning, so forgetting the last mile, everybody said to Jeff, he's crazy. Why has he opened up his marketplace? And he said he wants customer choice. He wants them to be able to get everything they might need. And what many people criticized then in terms of opening up the marketplace has turned out to be a a mega success. And I think it's the same here. Let's take Impost as an example because it's very, very topical. They're about to have this mega IPO, we understand, which will probably be the best deal in Advent's history. And the thinking, as I said, is they keep it closed because they have a comparative advantage. No one has anywhere close to that many machines. Now, what 
might happen. I'm not saying it will because there are a number of factors, but by keeping that network closed, they force the competition to work together because we can see that Polish Post has not shown itself able to leverage the network of actually probably about 13,000 access points, which is more than Impost's lockers, but they haven't been able to leverage it in a customer-centric way and they've certainly not let anyone else in. You've got Switbox, which has supplied them with about 50 lockers. And then you've got about 170, maybe there's a few more now, open lockers by Switbox, which are used by the Post, by DHL and now DPD. So parcel lockers, between this open versus closed in Poland. So, so basically, we're, we're, I think we got to the point where we said that, okay, we've got this, this very strong incumbent in the form of Inpost, who is the incumbent out-of-home locker player. And there could be two strategies. Strategy one would be, which is what they're doing, we keep the network closed. And by the way, the thinking is it keeps competitive advantage. Plus, because we offer an end-to-end locker product, we make more money. The alternative view, which they don't buy yet, is yes, but if you do that, you're forcing DPD, which is still a very big player. They've lost a lot because of lack of -of out-of-home competence. So Last Mile Experts have recently just finalized some very interesting data, and it turns out that the tables have been completely turned with Impost now, we forecast in 2020, probably being even 50% larger than uh, than DPD, which is incredible. DPD, when I left it, was the dominant number one player. So, so we've got the scenario where DPD needs to do something, DHL as well. If those guys get together, perhaps they can get the Americans on board plus GLS and create an alternative network. That will be quite a powerful group of companies, probably strong enough to make something viable. Now, the alternative would have been for Impost to say, guys, come on board. Then maybe instead of having 10,000 machines, they might have 20,000, 25, which if you think about it, it protects them even more because once you get to 25,000 machines, it's almost impossible for anyone to come in and compete. Because there are no gaps in the market effect, no gaps in the network to fill in. Because if they're really fast, how many will they have in year one? maybe three, 4,000 if they're incredibly fast. And remember, a lot of the prime locations have been selected. So let's say they have four or five compared to 25. So, you know, who's going to want to work with them? They're going to want to work with the, the network that is proximate because remember, this proximity is fundamental. Mark, so we've, we've that- run out of time. We have, to, <laughs> we have to wrap it up here, unfortunately. One last comment from you, Mark, before we do wrap it up. Last comment, we maybe need to do this Next time then, the reason the the, the incumbent players who keep closed networks say they're needed is that they cannot have five, six, 10 different courier companies approaching the lockers because it's not productive, it's not efficient, which is true. That's the secret sauce. Let's keep that in reserve and maybe that'll be something for a future topic because there is a way to do it. And unfortunately, most of the closed networks haven't understood that yet. So comment below what you, you think about this closed versus open. You know, is it something that needs to be approached in every single country? Should private operators open up to other carriers? Should postal operators open up to other carriers? Comment below. Let us know what you think. Marek Rzecki, thanks for being part of The Last Mile Profits today. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, everyone.